Okay, so we've had a look at a few of the different asset classes that are around. But before we even get into which ones of these are best for you, let me ask you a question. What is risk? If you were to make a financial plan, whether it's on your own or with a financial planner, what are the things that could derail those plans? What are your risks? And what I want you to do is open up to page 24 of your workbook. And there at the very top, it says, what are your three biggest risks that you think about when it comes to your current financial situation? So let's pause the video and then for the next five to 10 minutes, actually spend some time thinking about what those risks are and writing them down. How did you go? So we know that everyone's idea of risk is different. From doing this around the country, we had risks come up like health risk, or what happens if the age pension or Centrelink changes, or what happens if we go through another GFC, what happens if the coronavirus happens again and we have a bigger pandemic. For others, it will be about what happens if my child gets a divorce and I need to be able to help them out. Like everything in finances, everyone's idea of risk is going to be different. And it's really important to have this discussion with a financial planner if you ever go and see one. Because really, if a financial planner doesn't know about what your risks are, they're not gonna be able to make a plan B in case that actually happens. The other thing to know as well is that a financial planner or an investment advisor might look at risk a little differently to you. You see, when we look at risk, we often look at it from a mathematical and investment market point of view. We'll look at things like currency risk. What happens if we have investments overseas and currency moves against us? You know, what's gonna to happen to BHP's earnings if the Australian dollar falls? We'll look at something like political risk. What's the risk of a changing government? What rules might they change? What might a change of government do to something like franking credits? We'll have a look at things like interest rate risks, but not necessarily the way that you do. You might look at interest rate risk as being, well, what happens if interest rates keep going down and I don't get as much as I'm used to from the cash that I've got in my bank account. We'll also be looking at things like, well, what happens to a company's earnings? Um, or what happens to their debt? Or what happens to the way that we value that company if interest rates move one way or the other? We also need to consider liquidity risk. How easy is it for you to get out of an investment if you need to? During the GFC, for example, there were a heap of property trusts that were actually frozen, where you couldn't get your money out even if you wanted to because they couldn't exit those properties in an orderly fashion. So that's what we're looking at from a liquidity risk point of view. And then we'll be having a look at each individual investment risk. So how good is the management of this company? What environmental factors do we need to consider? What's the competition doing? And more than anything then, we'll look at how reliable is the expected return of an investment? How likely is it that that return from that asset is going to be less than we expected? I know, confusing, isn't it? Probably nothing like those three things that you wrote down when we started doing this exercise. Financial advisors will usually ask you to do some kind of risk profiling exercise. And it's designed to see how much you can tolerate risk or how much can you tolerate your investments going up and down. This is then going to help guide them towards what asset classes you should have in your investment portfolio, which is what we're going to have a look at the next video. For now though, let's go through this risk profiling and what it might look like. So I'll get you to go to page 26 and go through the risk profiling questionnaire, which is on page 26 and page 27. Just follow the instructions, answering each question, tallying up the score at the end, which will give you a final score. And then over the page, you'll see that your score is going to correlate to a particular risk profile. So again, I'm going to get you to pause this video and this might take you another five to 10 minutes to do and then come back to the video when you've done it. If it takes you more than five or 10 minutes, you're overthinking it. Please don't answer the questions you weigh, the way that you think you should act. 
make sure that you answer them with your initial response. So go ahead and pause this video and come back in five to 10 minutes. Welcome back again. The questionnaire really is designed to provide an outcome where you're seeking some exposure to growth and can take some capital volatility in your investments. We prefer to use a tool that has a focus on behavioral finance, and it's a great starting point for a discussion. But what we know is that not everybody should be balanced. Everyone will be doing this with different fears, different goals, different current positions, different income needs, different risks. There's no one size fits all to answer that question of what should I do with my money? Most importantly, your investments have to be able to pass the sleep test. Can you go to bed at night knowing that your investments can and will go up and down while you sleep? And if you can't sleep, regardless of what some risk profiling tool says, you need to revisit your investment choices. We'll go through some of the things to consider in the next video on asset allocation, but for now, I just want you to spend some time thinking about the way that you've come out in this risk profiling tool and does that really ring true to the way that you feel about risk? And then I'll see you in the next video.